and welcome to Photography TV, the photography channel. I'm Sean Welby and in our first show I'll be showing you the pros and cons of tripods meeting up with one of our guest photographers, Steve Hart, who's reviewing two images sent in by one of our viewers and be bringing you January's news from the photography press. But first, let's go over to the Convolution Rooms in Leicester, where I met Paul Ward, who showed me the finer points of high-key lighting. You're a freelance photographer, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Brilliant. And how long have you been doing it? Um, probably about 10 years. Brilliant. And what sort of work do you do? I do everything. I do a lot of fashion, a lot yeah. of portrait stuff. Um, I do a lot of DJ portfolio shots, um, but I also do landscapes. I do, you know, I've just been to Cuba and done some uh, oh, wow. some shots for a P&O ferry. So I do a huge range of, of work. What's like your forte or what's your favourite? Um, I really like doing fashion shots. I really like when someone's got a really interesting idea and you've got to try and work out a way of getting it or yeah. sort of interpreting an idea. I think, I think that's where the creativity comes into it. Absolutely. So what are you going to be showing us today? Then. Okay, today we're going to look at high key lighting techniques. Right, um, and what does that involve? Well, high key is the opposite of what we've got here. We've got a low key setup here in this studio. High key is where you use a pure white backdrop or you, over, you overexpose a backdrop right. so that it appears white. Um, and that's what high key is effectively. So is there many ways of doing this or? Yeah, I mean, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Um, today we're going to look at three different ways. Oh, okay. um, we're going to look at obviously a studio setup. Yeah. Um, we're going to look at a slightly lower budget setup where you've got two lights. Okay. And then we're going to look at a really cheap setup where you use a window and you use a reflector to to create oh, the light right, on okay. the model. Is there any way you could just show me now an example of some high key photography? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, if you take a look at these three images and see if you can work out what method has been used for which image. OK, I'm going to leave Paul to set up the studio and I'm going to have a little word with Emily, who's doing Amy's makeup. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so how do you get a look that both the photographers and the models look? I think the most important thing is the base. OK. Good concealer. A uh, very good foundation. Right. This is because the camera picks up every detail. The photographer will love you because yeah. less editing. Of course. And the model will obviously love you because they want to look flawless as possible. And do so. people often get the um, colour of the foundation wrong? They do actually. Yeah. Um, a lot of models that do their own makeup, that's where they always go wrong. You should always match the foundation with your neck colour. Right. Often your face and your neck are different colours, oh. which is why. It's always time get orange lines. Yeah, oh, so really that's an important tip to try and match it with your neck rather than Definitely, your face. Definitely, yeah. So what are you doing to Amy now? I'm giving a highlighter on her cheekbones. Right. This gives a nice chiselled effect. Yeah. Very flattering for the model. It also works really well with the lighting in the photo shoot. So, so what other aspects of the face do you really work on? The eyes. Definitely right. the eyes. Got to really bring them out. Mm. It, um, the eyes are really important to contact the camera. So. Um, that's why normally for kind of glamour looks, they do quite smoky eyes. Yeah. Because the, it's all about the eyes contact in yeah, the camera. Yeah, it's all seductive. But yeah, it catches the audience's attention. Definitely. And, and the false eyelashes really help as yeah, well. Yeah, it really opens your eye and it just looks great, doesn't it? And the, the black eyeliner you've got really brings out the whiteness. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And you've got lots yeah. of glitter, I see, on your eyes as well. Yeah. Yeah. Lots. <laughs> We're going for a bit of a fashion look today, yeah. so oh, brilliant. we can go a bit mad. Oh, well, it looks really good. I'm going to leave you to it now, girls, but I'll see you later on. All right, then. I'm going to get back to Paul now in the studio. So, Paul, what's first? OK, well, first of all, we're going to try and get a, a high-key lighting effect using some very cheap and simple equipment. Um, basically, we're going to use a reflector yep. um, and a window um, to get the effect. Now, the window that we've got has got bars on, so obviously those are going to show up in the photo, but if you wanted a pure white background, yeah. you just make sure you found a window that hadn't got the bars on, oh, and, yeah. it, and it would be fine. So, um, first of all, we're going to use a light meter. Right. And what's that for? Um, the light meter is going to tell us what settings we need to use on the camera. Right. Um, the way it works is, first of all, you program the light meter with the ISO setting that you've got on your camera and with the shutter speed that you think you're going to want to use. And the light meter will work out 
the aperture that you need to use in that situation. So what I'm going to do first, because we're trying to get a difference with the background, we, we want it to overexpose and we want her to expose perfectly. We're going to meet her for the background just to see what that's coming at. And that's coming up at F4. Yeah. So then what we do is we meet her. Uh, do you want to just hang, yeah. if you grab the reflector and just um, get it into position. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> and then we meet her for Amy's face. And that's coming up at f2.8. Right. So, what would you do, say, if you didn't have a light meter then? Okay. Well, yeah, you don't you don't need a light meter. A lot of people don't use one anymore. Right. Um, I personally don't use one any, anymore because, obviously, with the advent of digital, you don't you don't really need it. So, um, what you do is set your camera to um, the TV mode, yeah. which is where you set the shutter speed in the first place, and the camera works out the aperture, same as we did with the light meter. Yeah. Um, Obviously, if we just get a reading off that, yeah, it's reading the same as the okay. uh, light meter. And then if we take a reading, yeah, literally just by pointing it at Amy, yeah, that's given us f2.8 again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, if you hold that, again, yeah. I'm going to take, take a quick shot and just see right. how, it's, how it's out and just see right. how, it's, how it's coming out. So ready, one, two, three. Okay, that's oh, great. Oh, yeah, really nice. Okay, that's coming out perfect. Um, yeah. And obviously, if it's coming out, if it's coming out too dark, you can just change your aperture or your shutter yep. speed accordingly, and then you know to get the desired result. And that's that's the great thing about it. Mm, fantastic. So, can you tell us what would happen then if we didn't have a window and it was dark? Okay. Well, that's another story. So come with me, and we'll uh, oh, we'll sort that out. More on that later. I'm by the Thames just outside Henley, where earlier on I met up with Steve Hart, who gave his advice on two images sent in by one of our viewers. <laughs> earlier on in the show we were looking at the uh, technique of high-key photography. And I wondered whether you could give me your impression of those two images that the viewer sent in. Yeah, well they're obviously both high-key images, they've yep. got that in common. And looking at them, there's the obvious differences. So what You've... are the differences then? Well, you've got the little boy, he's been presented in black and white. Yep. Obviously, you've got Emma Lou there in colour. They're both in the centre of the image, but they're obviously, they've been taken for different reasons. Right. So the little boy is a family portrait. Okay. So the customer, with a portrait, the customer is either in front of the camera, or in this case, you've got a little boy, so his parents are going to be the customer, and they're just, just off camera, but they're there. You know that they're there, and the customer's there. Emma Lou is there as the model. She's not the customer. The picture's been taken for a different purpose. Right, so there, there are obvious differences, but what about the uh, technical differences in the photos? Well, with the little boy, chances are he's running around the studio. Yes. Uh, they're not going to sit there for hours, so you can set up the lighting yep. and get it technically correct. So what you're going to need to do is have a slightly more flat lighting so that you allow him to move around within a larger space, but there is still modelling light going on there. And also notice that he wasn't actually looking directly at the camera either. Absolutely. Now there with the picture, remember with who the customer is, it's the parents. What they're looking for there is the character of the little yeah. boy. They're not necessarily looking there to see every single feature, looking directly at the camera, cute as it may be. Now actually here, we've got a little bit more of his character. There's a little bit more depth there in terms of who he is as a little lad. And the fact that he's looking off camera, it just adds a little bit to that story, really. So with the picture of Emma Lou, what are the technical differences? Well, Emma Lou is a static subject. She's going to sit there, hopefully if she's a good model, as long as you need her to. So yep. you can move the lighting around her to produce something that is much more technically perfect. This one, we want to be as, um, as perfect as possible with the lighting and the shadow. And she's going to sit there as long as necessary to get that right. The picture of the little lad, that's much more forgiving technically. We're looking there for the character to show through and that will override the technical aspects. So if you say that the uh, character can override the technical aspects, then how do you actually judge a photo? Well, there are techni technical aspects that we are looking for within the image. Your eyes are going to be drawn to the lightest part of the image first. Now in this instance, it's actually his ear. Right. not the main interest of the picture, which is facial features. Right. Now, if you look at the eyes, there are the catch lights there, so there is a light in front, but ideally that should be a little bit more powerful and override that side of the face with the ear. So you always want the focus to be, obviously, on the main features, so you've got to be careful where you light the photo, obviously. Yeah, ideally the little lad would be looking slightly further around and so looking at that light. Right, so how are you going to judge the photo of Emma Lou, then? 
And with Emma Lou, we can be more critical over the technical aspects. Looking at the symmetry of her shoulders, they're not quite symmetrical. Also looks like she's gripping the chair this bit too hard. We've got a bit of muscle tone there. And we've got the disconnected hands. They're not quite connected to the body. <laughs> also, with the hair being really blonde and the background being very white, is there a problem with this? Absolutely. Or? You do need to separate the subject from the background. So having that very light hair, it does make it more difficult to light it. And that's been done very well in this oh, image. Oh, brilliant. So to summarise, what can we take away from uh, this? Um, the reason why we're taking the image, the photographer should always need to have that in mind. In this instance, we've got two different types of customers. We've got the family portrait and the stock image. And we need to think about how do we fulfil what the customer needs from that image. Well, that's great, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you.